Welcome to episode 60 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today. And then applying that to those around me. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is what libertarians want, where I'll discuss some misconceptions about the world that libertarians want to live in. Every so often, I see a comment, meme, or video with something like, the world libertarians want, attached to it. It reminds me of an economic course from the great courses that I listened to once. The professor made a comment at the beginning, that he had attended many events where he heard the phrase, it's basic economics, followed by some perspective. He went on to say that as an economics professor, his experience was that people who said that were often quite wrong about whatever it is that they were saying. Likewise, whenever I see someone who isn't a libertarian, and sometimes one who is, say, this is the world libertarians want, I'm almost always prepared for a chuckle. With that, let's dive right in. The idea for this episode was from a tweet that I saw recently. It had a short video clip with the caption, this is the future the libertarians want. Since then, I saw other problematic videos that I had an issue with for various reasons, but I realized that they contributed to the idea of a world that libertarians want. I'll play these videos in just a moment. I want you to be warned, they aren't necessarily graphic, but they may be bothersome to some people watching, and they're not quite appropriate for children. So take whatever measure is appropriate for yourself and those that are with you. The libertarian community can be quite unique in various ways. The title of this episode is part in fun and part serious. Rather than speak definitively, my goal in this episode is to counter wildly incorrect notions and point people in the right direction. The overall points that I make are generally well accepted, even if some are accepted with some level of nuance or libertarians disagree maybe on some specific details. Let's go ahead and take a look at this first video. It's only 19 seconds long. Okay, a couple of things are unclear. One, where this video was taken. I saw multiple links suggesting that it was New York City and one that was indicating it came from Montreal. Two, whether or not this was real or staged. Some comments on Reddit provided several reasons why this appeared to them to be staged rather than real. But here's the thing. After seeing responses to this on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, and various web links, one thing seemed very clear. A large percentage of those who saw the video believe it was real. What that really means is many people believe that such a scenario has either likely happened before or it could happen in the society that we currently live in. Even if it was staged, even if it was staged, the fact that so many people believe it says something for our society today. In the two other videos, we'll see in a moment, I think it's fair to say that even if it is staged, it doesn't change what I have to say about it. Why is that? When someone presents this video as the world libertarians want, it's not unlike the many concerns that I've heard without a video. People have quite literally said libertarians would be happy in a world where they just stepped over drug-riddled bodies in the street. And that is exactly what this video shows. Whether it's real or staged, it depicts what many have said and believe to be true or would be true. Two major things do stick out to me in this video. The first is that a woman might be passed out even lying dead on a subway with the presumption that it's due to a drug overdose. 
The second is that no one bothers to help. Even the person filming appears to be so callous that they film until the doors close and the subway moves on. People have this perception because of the libertarian position on drugs. And that position is that all drugs should be illegal. Not just marijuana, but heroin, meth, cocaine, all of them. There are two reasons why libertarians tend to believe this. As I discussed back in episode 42, the primary reason, well, in episode 42, three pillars of libertarianism, self-ownership, each individual owns their own body and is the sole decider of what goes into it. No one has any more right to decide for you whether you should consume fruit than they do a drug, whether that's medically necessary or for recreation. The second reason that libertarians believe that all drugs should be legal extends from the first, and that is drug abuse is a medical problem, not a criminal one. Now, if someone is addicted to drugs and they steals they steal another person's wallet to get money for drugs, the crime is in stealing the wallet, not being addicted to drugs. Our position isn't a result of not caring. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We do care. We care about each individual, each individual making choices they believe best for them. And when individuals make poor choices, as many do, we care about correctly identifying human behavior in order to offer them the best support. Think about this for a moment. If libertarians are correct and drug abuse is best addressed by approaching it as a medical problem, then by approaching it as a criminal problem, Society has done great harm to people when they need help the most. But would such an event occur in a libertarian society? A woman lying on the subway with rats appearing to eat out of her mouth and no one appearing to assist? Might someone videotape and walk away, happy to get some social media clicks? Maybe, but that's what we have now. One heartening aspect of this video is the number of comments that I saw on social media, different social media sources, where people heavily criticized whoever took the video for their indifference and apathy. I first saw the video make its rounds in the libertarian community, and quite a few people were bothered by that fact. If this event was indeed real, it likely occurred over a fair amount of time, more than the 19 second clip that we have. It's possible that someone else, moments later, came to this woman's aid, maybe even multiple people. The society that libertarians want isn't one where people are left to die alone in the streets having overdosed on drugs. It's a society where the right for each individual to choose what does and does not go into their body. A society where people are not penalized for drug use and one where if they become drug addicts, there are better options to help than, or to help them recover than going to jail and having a criminal record. I'd like to show the next two videos one after another. They both are similar in nature and will be a stand-in for a different issue. Combined, they are just over two minutes. I want, as you're watching, for you to listen carefully as what is said will become important when I discuss them in a moment. Let's go ahead and play the videos. Thank you. 
In the first video, which is about 1 minute and 30 seconds, we see a fight that occurred at Miami International between 7 people over available seating. About 22 to 23 seconds in, you can hear a man yelling for them to stop, saying something like, you're going to kill him. We see two people visibly on top of one person on the left, and then a man in red towering over another person, just swinging relentlessly. As the camera pans to the left and to the right, we see a large crowd of people standing around, many with their phones out. Finally, after 50 seconds in, we see a man intervene and immediately one person stops assaulting the person that's on the ground and then the second person who is assaulting them stops as well. It was as simple as that. Sadly, the person that was being wailed on gets up, starts walking toward the other fight and then rushes into that brawl where the same man and then several others start peeling people away. The two second video is a bit more disturbing. Two women are fighting inside a little Caesars with one clearly winning and taking advantage of her dominance in the fight. She drags the other woman outside by the hair as she pummels the woman in her face. As they are going through the door, a man holds the door open as if he's being a gentleman while cracking an amused smile. The dominant woman in the fight continues to beat on the other woman and then stomps on her head, outside, on the concrete. The fight eventually stops, and the woman who was beaten gets up with the camera zooming in on her bloody face as she mentions her baby. These two videos are going to be a stand-in for the libertarian position on guns. There aren't really videos available that really provide people an opportunity to say, this is the future libertarians want. After a shooting tragedy, we sometimes see similar responses towards those who oppose additional gun control measures, but often the comment I see suggests that libertarians want a wild, wild west society where people shoot it out in the streets. And so, because these two videos kind of show the physical nature of a wild, wild west, they'll be the stand-in for this particular issue. Now first, I saw many fellow libertarians criticizing the fact that people were happy to videotape the brawl between the two, two women, open the door, but not intervene. I found that despicable as well. I also found it despicable that it was almost a full minute into the video at the airport before anybody intervened in the fight. What really bothered me was that when the man yelled, stop, you're going to kill him or them or whatever he specifically yelled, uh, that was a problem. Because if you believe the fight is at that level, I personally believe it's, a, it's morally reprehensible not to intervene. I don't know if any libertarians were present at the time of either fight. Nevertheless, libertarians have a strong or have strong views when it comes to violence and even the proportionality of response to violence. That is, the level of physical response that one can enact when they are met with violence. Libertarians no more want people brawling all over the place than they want people shooting each other. They do want people to have the option to defend themselves when necessary. And we aren't much for the particular weapon that you choose. If multiple people attack me, a few of my peers would say, they wouldn't say much if I defended myself with my bare hands, assuming that I was skillful enough, a knife, a handgun, or an AR-15. Makes no difference. Defense is defense. We believe this for the same reason that we hold our views on drugs, that each person has self-ownership, and that is they own themselves. Now, back to the issue of what kind of society that libertarians want. 
in the same way that we don't want to see drug-addled people lying all over subways and streets, we don't want to see brawls break out, much less gunfights. The idea of defense is just that, defense. Many of us would agree that an armed society is a polite society, and that is for good reason. A firearm equalizes in many, many situations. Consider the 2019 case of an eight-month pregnant woman here in Florida. Two men broke into her home around 9 p.m., and they had managed to subdue her husband and were pistol-whipping him. She then managed to get away, grab the AR-15 that they owned, fire a single round, hitting just one of the men. They both fled, and the man who was shot collapsed in the drainage ditch outside where he died. Without any firearm or self-defense training, most everyone instinctively knows that an eight-month pregnant woman is at a severe disadvantage against two male attackers, armed with pistols, who have already overpowered her husband. The AR-15 it even the odds. Beyond how many cowardly or callous people might exist in the world, these two videos show just how easily a person can be overpowered. Once you are overpowered, the chances of an altercation leveling out are pretty low. Often, they require intervention. One might argue, or one argument might be, that in both videos, because firearms were not present, they both just ended with people getting a simple beating but are still alive to tell the story later, and likely to make a full recovery. This is true. You might also consider that if firearms were more prevalent, people would be less prone to fight in the first place. It's easy for many people to think they are tough, sizing people up and then finding out, you know, they were quite wrong. It's happened to me, and as a teen, I watched it happen to many others. I would like to do a quick thought experiment. What I want you to do is close your eyes and imagine that you're in a crowded place, any place, the movies, a bank, your favorite restaurant. Someone walks in and they scream really loud, everyone get down or I'll punch you in the face. It's unlikely that very many people would drop to the ground. Someone might even stand up and say, and taunt them and say, you know what, go ahead, take your best shot. Now what I want you to do, I want you to imagine that same scenario but instead, someone walks in, points a gun in the air, fires a single shot, and yells, Everyone get down, or I'll shoot you in the face! Now how many people are you imagining hit the ground? I'd wager, dollars to low-carb donuts, that you imagined pretty much everyone. Anyone that you might imagine not immediately hitting the ground is likely reaching for their own weapon. The point of this thought experiment is to say that most people instinctively know that a gun is an equalizer bank robbers, and other armed assailants tend not to seek out places where they expect others to be heavily armed. And when they do, they plan for that, such as a bank when there might be a security guard. And that's because they know that it only takes one person and one well-placed shot to stop them. And if multiple people are carrying firearms, then they are really at a disadvantage. Even if they manage to subdue the first person who draws upon them, there may be others who get the drop while they are dealing with that first person. Similar to our position that people have authority over what goes into their body, people have authority over what measures they use to protect their body. And similar to our position that drugs are a health problem, not a criminal problem, we believed that an armed society changes how people see violence which changes their readiness to engage it. In both issues, we see authority over one's own body as paramount, and we have a different perception of how events play out under different circumstances. This is where opponents make their mistake when they present some world that they think that libertarians want. They attempt to present our ideas in the world as it currently exists rather than the world as it would exist should our policies and our ideas gain momentum. To my fellow libertarians, this is our failure. It is on us to find microcosms of our view or our views in the world today and impress upon people these examples as becoming the prevailing reality. It is our job to distinguish between the things that would remain and the things that would change or potentially change 
and how those changes impact the choices that people would make. Allow me to close by saying this. I know many libertarians, many, and I do not know a single libertarian who thinks a society that regularly or even occasionally would step over people dying of drugs is one they want to see. I do not know a single libertarian who thinks having a shooting gallery in everyday spaces is okay. These are not our positions, nor even remotely what we want to happen, much less believe would happen. Now at this point, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a bit short, so I do apologize. Had a bunch of things going on this week, and this is where I would normally jump to a bill review in the segment. If you saw Friday's show, you know it was just me, and my guest host was unable to make it. Between preparing for that show and an event this weekend with my local Libertarian Party affiliate, where I'm the chair, I was unable to adequately prepare for a bill review. It's certainly not tough to find one, but I like to spend the appropriate amount of time reading and researching to deliver something meaningful. Meaningful. I'll be back this next Monday with a fresh new episode and a bill review. But I hope you enjoyed everything that I had to say today. And I hope that you have a fresh idea on how to tackle or how to view any comments that you see about the world that libertarians want to live in. Generally, almost always actually, when you see a comment about this is the world that libertarians want, it's usually wrong. And the reason that it's wrong, again, just to reiterate, is because what somebody is doing is they're taking our ideas and they're applying it to the world as it exists today, which cannot be done. We have to take these ideas and we have to start thinking about how would the world be different if these ideas were in everyday practice. Part of that, again, is looking for how we see these ideas play out in smaller areas. We can look to things like a simple fight and we can see how is it, what is it that we know about fighting? What is it that we know, just as regular everyday average people, what do we know about gunmen? that we've seen, that we've heard about in the news. We don't even have to be researchers. These are things that we can look at and then we can say, okay, now, if this particular situation were the predominant situation, based on what we know, how might we expect people to behave? And that is the difference between with what people say the world, uh, the, the world that libertarians want and the actual world that libertarians want. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And to catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, I want you to head on over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media network, where the weekly episode of Just Me airs on Monday night at 8 p.m. Or join Josh Fields from the Libertarian Apothecary and me on Friday night at 11 p.m. for a discussion style episode of the same topic. While you're there, be sure to check out some of the other great free speech media shows. And remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.